about a week ago, Henry Kissinger died. And now there were quite a lot of people who were thinking about his legacy. And we are still living uh, with the consequences of his deeds, of his uh, legacy. <clears throat> when I was growing up, I heard about Kissinger, but his um, main uh, uh, main type of activity was when I was quite young. And uh, I had an impression that he did some kind of uh, very good things. He had a lot of authority. He, uh, he was a uh, very keen diplomat, very clever, very cunning. And uh, then when I knew, find out about what he was doing, actually, I just cannot understand what kind of, uh, why he was so praised, some kind of an authority. What he was doing all his life, he was trying to negotiate with evil. Um, I understand he was as a, he was from the family, from Jewish family that fled Holocaust. Well, um, they did it in '38, before the you know the final question. They saw the writing on the wall in in, in well in advance. All the family members that that were left in Germany. They were all killed during during the Holocaust. They have not, have never survived, and I think that it put some impression on him. But uh, quite a lot of Jews relieved it at uh, this, uh, and uh, there were only two options: uh, either fight evil or try to negotiate. It. To fight evil, that uh, as Jews did during the 1948 uh, war for, for Israel independence, the first uh, Israeli war. But Kissinger apparently chose the other path. He was trying to negotiate with evil. Uh, and uh, it, is not, uh, it is not surprising that the first thing in his mind and first proposal after the beginning of this uh, full-scale invasion uh, of Russia into Ukraine, uh, was to negotiate with Russia. Just like he negotiated with uh, North Vietnam Vietnamese, and for which he re received the peace prize, and he was trying then afterwards to give up uh, this uh, Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, but... Uh, he negotiated with them, with North Vietnamese, uh, and uh, the idea was that uh, the status quo remains. The North Vietnam will remain, and the South Vietnam will remain. And North Vietnamese just reneged uh, at the first opportunity uh, this uh, negotiation, this, uh, this agreement, and did what they said, that, what they wanted. Then he negotiated with other evil, with China. Uh, because of his negotiations, Taiwan was, was expelled and the uh, Public Republic of China, People's Republic of China, sorry, was accepted into United Nations and uh, became a legitimate state and not some kind of uh, murderous um, communists who just seize the power of a great country with the help of United States, with the help of uh, State Department of United States. And uh, now we have again the consequence of that. We have uh, now the United States is struggling and uh, they see that their main enemy is not Russia anymore, it's not Soviet Union, not Russia, it is the People's Republic of China. And uh, now they are struggling for world uh, domination with China, who they ac who because who Kissinger uh, helped to accept into United Nations to make them legitimate, to uh, open the trade with them, and uh, to allow them become 
this monster, uh, I mean economic monster, as they are now. And uh, they have uh, all of this uh, potential. And, um, you know, during this conflict uh, last year in October, um, Elon Musk disabled uh, disabled uh, Starlings uh, to not to allow our um, forces to attack on uh, Crimea. And this is because he has some interest in uh, in a Russian uh, market. What would he do and what other um, billionaires, other influential people uh, or companies do if the um, China assets will be threatened by Chinese government? What uh, kind of uh, treachery and treason they will do in this state. So, uh, all this because uh, Taiwan was ousted from United Nations and now uh, Public Re People's Republic of China is deemed the only the sole representative of uh, Chinese people and it was not legitimate uh, government. Uh, the legitimate government was in Taiwan. It was uh, then uh, delegitimized and said that, well, they're not representing anybody and they even not a separate country, they are part of uh, China. And the Chinese government have all the, uh, all, all the rights to this island of Taiwan. And, uh, well, uh, that's that's the consequences of his policies uh, and also this detent uh, or how this called pronounced is this french word with uh, soviet union uh, again uh, they gave uh, soviet union time to uh, to build up economically again after the 60s and uh, at the first opportunity soviet union decided that it was a good idea to invade uh, Afghanistan and they did that and uh, that was the end of the tent. And the next generation of politics after Kissinger, uh, namely Reagan, who knew that you should not negotiate with evil, you just, you will, um, you should only accept the capitulation of evil. No, no negotiate. You, you, you are not negotiated uh, with, with the evil as with uh, legitimate, with um, with uh, equal partner. No, no, no. You just have to beat them up until they are uh, uh, they are ready to surrender, and then you accept their capitulation and their surrender. That's all. That's what was done as in uh, in uh, Second World World War, because there was uh, <clears throat> there was a understanding that you don't negotiate with them. You just accept their capitulation. And I am sure that uh, Henry Kissinger was very happy with himself when he uh, reached an agreement to end the Vietnam War and he thought, thought of himself as this really shrewd, really, <laughs> really, I mean, high-level politician who achieved something. No, he achieved only the death and destruction of of uh, uh, ally of um, United States in the East Asia. That's that's the only thing he, he achieved. I think that the, he felt the same way that Chamberlain felt when he arrived from this Munich uh, conference and uh, said that I brought you peace. That's exactly how he felt, I think. And uh, the consequences were uh, similar. Okay. Well, I think it is, it's, uh, it's enough for today. Thank you for, uh, for viewing and till next time. Bye.